Hey folks, today we're going to make some lightning. I just wanted to show you the end scene first. Now we're not going to get all of this done in this short tutorial. I'm going to be looking at creating the forked lightning shapes in this section. If we get time, I can come back and look at doing the clouds in another video. Modeling lightning is a little bit tricky because it is a branching structure. But thankfully, Houdini ships with a node that looks at L systems and L systems are designed to look at branching structures. So let's put down an L system node here. But if we hit P on the keyboard here, and we go up to this little cog, we can see that this particular node has some presets saved on it. And one of those presets is lightning. So now I have a lightning type generator. If we take a look at the random seed, if I click here, I can see that it is set up to look for the frame number. So if I hit play here and move through the frames, I can see that it is generating different lightning shapes on every frame. So this is a pretty good start. So one direction you could go is to animate the generations parameter here to have some growing lightning. Now that isn't very efficient because you'll end up with a texture atlas for each animated frame. So I'm going to tackle that in a different way by creating an alpha clip mask. In our background here, just to make things a little bit easier to see, I'm gonna hit D over the viewport, and then I'm gonna to go to the background tab, and I'm gonna change it from light over to dark. And that'll give me a black background so it's easy to see the lines. Now I'm just gonna turn on my grid here so I can orientate myself. We can see that the lightning is at the origin. Currently, the lightning is just some curves. If I middle mouse on my L system here, I can see that I have 11 polygons. Uh, I'm going to need to end up with a mesh so that I can control the thickness of my lightning. There is an option to do that here where I can set it up to be choose, but I want to have a little more control over this process. So I'm going to use a polywire node. In theory, I could use the sweep node here as well, but the polywire node will handle the multiple branches of the L system in more elegantly than the sweep node will by default. The problem that I have with the polywire node is that it currently is giving me the same thickness along the length of all the branches. So I would like to have the branches get thinner uh, as they get further away from the root here. So initially I'm gonna use the bounding box expression to make the wire thinner as it gets further away from the origin in Y. So that is going to be $BBY is the expression that I need. Now, we can see it's doing the exact opposite of what I want. It's getting thicker at the ends. So I can set it to be one minus $BBY because BBY is normalized between zero and one. And that is now getting thinner towards the ends, but it's much too thick overall. So I need to put this into parentheses so it gets evaluated first and then I can multiply it by a small value for the overall thickness of the wire. And that's maybe just a little bit too small, something like that for now. Now, the next thing to take care of is the fact that my lightning is in the wrong direction. It is going upward and I want it to go downward. So I'm going to put down a transform node and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees in Z and now my lightning is moving down from the origin. I'm more concerned with the lightning shape than I am with any of the shading that's on the model in Houdini. So I'm going to put down a color node here to color it white. I'll set it over to be white here. And then I'm going to over crank this value so that it is getting rid of most of the shading. So I'll just turn that up past what you would normally need. I'm going to jump up out of my geometry node. I've just renamed it here to lightning and I'm going to put down a camera node. I'm going to jump into my camera and line it up to look at my lightning here. And I need to set my view resolution to be 1K by 1K. And just frame up. As I move through the frames here, I'm looking to get 16 frames and I wanted a variety of different shapes over on the unity side and that's not too bad to get started Because I'm most interested in the shape I don't need to do any fancy rendering on this side So I'm going to render out with a flipbook in this case I just want to turn off the wireframe shading on the mesh here I'm going to create a new project here And I'll do this very quickly and I'll be back in one second 
So I've set up my project path and I've just gotten rid of some folders that I don't think I'm going to need. And I can click the accept there and then I'm going to go file and I'll save my file. Now, because my project is set up correctly, I can go and create my flipbook, which will be an output, which I can save out into my project hierarchy. So I can right click here, I can hit flipbook with new settings. I just need to ensure that I'm going to render a beauty pass. I don't want any handles on the viewport. Uh, I'm going to render it 16 frames here. On the effects tab here, I'm just going to make sure that I've got it set to the highest quality settings. And over on the size tab, I need to ensure that it is going to be 1K. I did this previously on the camera, but the flipbook does not know anything about the camera. So you need to set that up to be 1K as well. And I can hit start. Now that's going to launch M play. It should do this quite quickly. And you can see it has um, ripped through those 16 frames because it is just capturing the screen. Because I've set my project up correctly, I can hit save sequence here and it will put it out where the hip file is saved. Now I want to put it into the render folder here because it is an output and I'm going to call it lightning underscore v01 dot dollar f4 I want four frame padding and I'm going to save it out as a PNG because I will want an alpha and I can click accept there it's going to render it 16 frames it will put out an alpha and the color hit save those files have been successfully saved out onto disk you can see the 16 files just here and what I want to do is pack these into a texture atlas. So I can do that in COPS, which is a compositor within Houdini. I'm going to open up a COP network inside in my geometry here by diving back into the geo node and typing COP to network. And this embeds a compositing network within the modeling context. I can jump in here. I can hit tab and type file and go and look for that image sequence, which I just put out. Just inside in render, and here we go. Here it is just here. Now, to be able to see 2D images in Houdini, we need to swap our scene view here for our composite view. You can find that by right-clicking and going to viewers, and there is a composite viewer just there. And it takes a second, and then it loads in the file sequence. So now if I scrub through, I am reading the files that were written out to disk. Now what I want to do is pack them into an atlas, and I can do that using a mosaic node. Now there is a gotcha with a mosaic with the mosaic node. Uh, you need to be on the first frame. It is going to take the 16 frames that we have in our sequence and on and pack them into one atlas, but you have to be on the first frame to see it. Now the mosaic node will take a second to cook. And if I zoom back out, you can see that we now have those 16 frames packed into an atlas that is four by four. Now, if you were generating more frames that you needed to pack, if for example, you had a five by five atlas, this will be 25 and this will be five. So I want to write that atlas back out onto disk now. So I can do that using a file output ROP. So I'll just hook up here and then I need to tell Houdini what I want to render out. I just want to render out one frame in this case, and I'm going to render it out into my render folder here, and I'm going to call it lightning atlas dot png. Now it's going to be v1 dot png, and click accept. And we have now written out our atlas onto disk. So to recap, in Houdini, with very few nodes really, we created some lightning, rendered it out to disk, and then turned it into a texture atlas using Houdini's compositor. In the next video, we're going to take our texture atlas back over to Unity and we will put it into a particle system that can read each one of these little tiles individually so that we get an array of lightning strikes. See you in the next video.